it was through my involvement in the recording business that I got to know Mitch Miller. And when he started with his series of albums, which were extremely successful, it gave birth to the idea. I had the idea, maybe we can do something like this in, in television. And it was the first show I was ever involved in, in selling as a package. And I was not really in the television department at the time, so I teamed up with a... With what an, year is this? 61, I think. I think. We've got to get a statistician to tell us what year. But I seem, seem to think it was 61. And I teamed up with an agent in the television business and convinced him we got something here. And it was interesting. At that particular time, there were what we call regional networks. In other words, the beer companies were not allowed to sponsor nationally. Howard Riley was in the television department, and I went to Howard and I said, you know, I could use some help. I think this is something we can sell. He liked the idea. And I started to say there were beer companies couldn't sponsor nationally, so there were regional networks, like Ballantine's Beer at the time only sold in the East Coast. And Falstaff only sold in the Midwest, and another one sold in the Far West. And we went to the ad agencies for all these beer companies and tried that this is a great show for a beer company, everybody singing, happy, boring. And we sold the series and went to NBC and they put it on because we had the advertisers. And he did 100 shows. The concept was follow the bouncing ball. In other words, lyrics would appear on the screen. People would be out mouthing it or singing it. We try to make production out of it, but you know he he was a purist. He wanted Americana people who didn't look too good. He, they couldn't move too well, and they were stiff as a board. So we had a choreographer, Jimmy Starbuck, as I recall, and we had a couple of guests. Leslie Uggams was a regular, and some other singers, and they would march through their routine and keep singing these songs that you would sing along with because you. While you're watching them do whatever formation they're singing, the lyrics would appear on the screen. So you would follow the bouncing ball and you would sing all these songs. They were all famous standards put to this tempo that was so boring. And I would say to Mitch Miller, can we change the tempo? Can we change the sound? It's, it's, we can't keep doing it. No, no. This is it. Well, he did 100 shows. So that was over four years. And my wife still hates me for it because I made her and the kids watch every Friday night this stupid show. <laughs>